Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later on, we're going to talk about if the legislature is going too far, too fast. But first, the world of news is changing, and one of the news sites that's changing in Colorado is Complete Colorado. It's editor-in-chief. You also see him in my seat a few times, Mike Krause. Thanks for being here. Thanks, John. It's great to be here. And the man who actually does all the work, <laughs> Justin Longo, the deputy editor-in-chief. Great to be here. Oh, nicely done. All right. All right. For, CompleteColorado.com looks like the Drudge Report when you pull it up on your screen. What is Complete Colorado? Well, Complete Colorado is a, it, it is, it's a Drudge style aggregator for Colorado and it's specifically about Colorado news, but it's much more than that. That uh, at Complete Colorado, we have that aggregator site, but we also have our own original reporting and, and uh, commentary site, uh, page two. So we do much more than Drudge, where Drudge will link to headlines to kind of set the narrative of the day for national news. And we do that at the state level through Complete, but we're also doing our own reporting and we're also putting out our own work. So there, that's the difference between those two. So when, when this thing started, I want to go over here because yeah. when, the, when this started, what is it, over a decade now? And you were one of the founders. The idea was to have one place where people could go and get their local, particularly political fix. That, uh, and, and after the newspapers started dropping and dropping and dropping, Finding local news coverage became harder and harder. How did it start? So I'll give you the origin story. So the founder actually is Todd Shepard, who is now in DC doing uh, reporting and political work down there. But Todd thought to himself, you know, what's Todd doing investigations here at, uh, Todd was, Todd Shepard was an Independence Institute investigative reporter. So Todd thought, what's better than getting one of my investigations on the Drudge Report is to actually be the Drudge Report. So he was always trying to get his stories on Drudge. Um, I don't think he was ever successful in doing so. I no, got so, one of them on. Oh, he got one of them on. But he had to kill a him, guy, but he still got it on. <laughs> he thought to himself, you know what? I think what's better than getting a link on Drudge is being Drudge. So he created Complete Colorado probably halfway through 2008. All right, so it's, it's been it's, 10 and a half years yeah. now. Yep. And still, Nobody goes to it. No, really. What, 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 what are the numbers? True. I mean, this, I'm amazed that over the course of this decade, uh, the, the readership continues to grow and continues to grow and continues to grow. If you were to compare it to the online presence of, well, I don't know, one of the daily newspapers around Colorado, where might it be? Well, sure. Actually, we have a really good idea of that through what's called the Lexi re rankings, uh, which ranks websites based on their, their traffic. And CompleteColorado.com is right comparable to a mid-sized daily Colorado newspaper, only for a statewide audience. So it's a little bit above uh, the Pueblo Chieftain, and a little bit below the Greeley Tribune in terms of the Lexi rankings, which means it's well-trafficked, uh, but it's not getting it's not a geographically specific uh, audience. It's the whole state. And what, it, it's one of those things, and you guys update it a couple times a day. But what, what's amazing for me is when you guys get a story and then the story turns into a story, if you know what I mean. That, that sometimes you link to something. Forget about the, the, we'll talk about page two in a second, but when you link to something at a far-flung corner of Colorado, and it somehow seems to bring it into, uh, in, into the body politic, that all of a sudden the talking heads in Colorado and talk show hosts and even newspapers go, I didn't know that was a story in that little paper. I mean, you, you, you do this every day. You have to scour mm -hmm. news sources throughout mm -hmm. uh, the state. You do it several times a day. How far flung do you have to look to find these stories? There is, I look through probably 30, 40, sometimes 50 different websites, newspapers, TV stations, political blogs. Um, and, and Mike has a good example of a story that we linked to, that we headlined, that became a story after the fact. Uh, Rob Whitwer announced that he was leaving the Republican Party and that was just a tweet. So we linked to the tweet that's where Rob explained in several tweets. Rob Whitwer is a uh, former Republican uh, state house member, a pretty well-respected guy in the, mm -hmm. the Republican Party. So he tweets out, I'm, I'm out leaving, of here. I'm leaving the Republican Party. We headline that because that's very newsworthy. It's a pro prominent Republican It was just a leaving. tweet. Just a tweet. Just a tweet. And then what happened, Mike? Yeah. It became the most tra it became the most click through thing for not just that day, but for a, a couple days after before it ended up below the fold. 
Uh, and it was really fascinating. So because it became a top story. It became the top most click through story on Complete Colorado for that day and then the, the following day as well. And the really interesting thing is that it was just Rob in his own words. It wasn't through the filter of, of a reporter through a newspaper, or it wasn't someone giving context, which is what reporters like to do, is to give context. It was just Rob, and then he gave a whole explanation. And so that's one of the great things about Complete is that that's something we would consider a, a, a bit of news that we can link to and share with the statewide audience that otherwise simply wouldn't have seen it. Talk to me a little bit about the unique reporting. One of the great things is not only to harvest all this news in one platform, so you don't have to go to 50 pages or newspapers or news stations. It's, it's right there twice a day, it gets updated, it's free. But you also have page two. What is page two? So page two is Complete Colorado's own original reporting and opinion commentary. And um, we actually have two full-time reporters, uh, one up in northern Colorado and one in southern Colorado, and they're both covering the capital uh, as a part of that as well. And so we put out original, we break stories and they do investigative pieces. Uh, and then we have several columnists who write regularly for us, Mike Rosen, who writes on whatever Mike wants to write on for the week. And then we have Christian Toto, who writes on culture and film and television. We even run John Caldera's take, column, take my column. Uh, which, is, which is dragging us down. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's a, and, and then Rob Nadelson, who writes on constitutional issues as regular columnists. Mm -hmm. We also run a lot of guest columns. We have a lot of people pitching us, just like they might pitch a newspaper to publish their stuff. Right, so tell me if, if, if this image works. I mean, I, I look at Complete Colorado, and it is Colorado's drudge report. Uh, it, it's, it's an aggregator. And then page two reminds me of, um, uh, of oh, oh, what am I thinking of, real clear politics. That, you know, it, it's, it's a mixture of a lot of different opinion pieces and, and other stuff. Mm -hmm. Fair way to put yeah, it? Yeah, and I would, I would say we're a little more reporting investigation, more reporting heavy than real clear. We're more than just commentary. But yeah, we have two full-time reporters doing investigations and capital reporting and reporting from around the state. So. Um, I think this goes to show the, the technological revolution is destroying gatekeepers in the sense that we don't need anyone to publish our stories, we do it ourselves. What, when this started, uh, Todd Shepard would get really excited, particularly if, if he did an investigative piece that got onto complete and then the respectable uh, outlets <laughs> had to go out and follow him. So several times the Denver Post would have to take that story and then do it as their own story, go verify it and run their own story, or Channel 9. Um, more and more, I'm seeing that it's going the other way, uh, that, that people want to get their news stories on to complete mm -hmm. for, that, for that bump to make sure it, it happens. How many, how many times you get hit up by reporters or other people from, from these other news sources, hey, can you, can you link to this story? Well, I know that Justin gets hit up and I get hit up and people, reporters might just drop us an email and say, hey, have you seen this? Did you see the story I just did? Uh, and also, um, and so what they're really looking for is to get linked to on complete and it does provide traffic. People call it the complete bump. The complete uh, bump. The complete bump. In fact, we've had several you know, bloggers who normally wouldn't have access to a statewide audience have been linked to and they, they, they'll actually email and comment on the amount of traffic they ended up with through, through mm -hmm. Complete. And so, yeah, it's, it's a real thing. Right, um, so complete, what, what, what I'm hearing is chance for payola. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hearing. I, it's been going on for years. We just haven't told, <laughs> told you about it. We just haven't told you about it because skin why skin. would we? <laughs> it's, it, it's, <laughs> screw up a good thing. Uh, and the other part is while, let, let's talk about the, the bent. Is, is, is this mm -hmm. a biased news source? Of course, a hundred percent it is. Of course, just like that. Yeah, yeah. We're not. We're not ashamed. We're. We're. Our bias is free market. Where our bias is in in story selection. We we select the stories that we that will be f more free market oriented, and and we're not ashamed of it. No. See, the difference is that the Denver Post and Colorado Public News or Public Radio and others do exactly the same thing, but they'll <laughs> never admit what you just admitted. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they should be ashamed. I don't think they should be ashamed either. I just wish they would uh, say, yes, this is, this is what we're doing. Why, why that way? Because we are. That's, that's what we are. That's, we're, we're unashamed about being pro-market pro and uh, pro-freedom. And it's, honestly, it serves a, a very much needed niche. People want to see stories from our perspective because they're just not seeing it in other places. Although, saying what I just said, even though it has that bent, 
why is it that every time I go there, there's stories from the Colorado Independent, there's yep. stories from the uh, 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 CPR, CPR and, and the Post and other, other sources that any day I'd say, you know, that is a left-leaning outfit. Some of them unabashed, like, like the Independent. Why are those on there? Um, because a lot of times, A, we can't escape, I can't escape you know what exists out there. They're, they're they're a news provider. They they cover stuff. So we have we cover we we pull from them. But also because I don't I don't want to be partisan in that sense. I don't want to be tribal. I want to have a wide breadth from which I'm I'm pulling. And a lot of times those those smaller sites or, or Colorado Independent does great work. And I I would love I love linking to Corey Hutchins and the people at the Independent. They're wonderful. Yeah. No. And I let me let me agree. I mean we might not agree with the with the Independent. But when they do a solid story, they do a solid story. When CPR Great. does a solid story and this is newsworthy, it's, it, needs, it needs to get out there. And so to, to point the eyeballs at them. What has surprised you most about the, the growth of the readership? I mean, it, it is, it's doing gangbusters. It, it, what surprised me the most is that we, we really had a big, big bump during this last election season. Uh, and then it stuck around. Because uh, of what times often happen is during when people decide to get engaged, they'll mm -hmm. start looking for, for news it's, it's about. And we did a lot of work on a lot of the ballot measures, so people were reading it heavily, but then they've stuck around. In fact, it's growing. And, but the most surprising thing is, is the breadth of the readership. We were just looking at this today, and, and uh, it's, if, you go back, if you go look at where people are coming to complete from, it is all over the state, which, which makes complete a little bit unique. And that you can take, and you mentioned it, you could take a, a story from a, from a small paper in the corner of the state, but it's a story that is going to happen elsewhere that's relevant to the rest of the state, and all of a sudden you introduce it to a statewide audience. And the most surprising thing to me has been just the number of people who, who uh, contact me uh, on a, and, and just say, hey, by the way, saw this on complete, or hey, can you, here's something you might want to think about putting on complete. That's the interesting mm -hmm. thing. Hard part is the free part. You want to go to the Denver Post, you're going to get hit a paywall. You're going to go to the Gazette now, you're going to hit a paywall. You go to lots of places and you hit a paywall. Not so with complete. Why? <laughs> we could use the money. I can pretty much guarantee we will never have a paywall. I just, I think this, the news market is giving us a market share on a silver platter and saying here, here's some market share if you want it. And because we will never be under a paywall, we're just going to grab it. And so people, uh, I want our, our fans and our viewers to know that they'll always have a safe space and, and complete. <laughs> <laughs> and for full disclosure, <laughs> complete has been rolled into the, into the Independence Institute. It's its own operation. It does its own stuff. But it, it, has, it, it has been a place for a different viewpoint and respected news. I still don't get a sense, though, from the respectable media, that they look at, at, at Complete and go, yeah, they're one of us. Come on into the newsroom with us. Hang, hang out at the press club with us. I, I don't get that feeling. Uh, I think uh, for the most part, you're, you're probably right. They like, they like the traffic. I think that they grudgingly respect a lot of the work that our reporters do since they get a lot of traffic and they break stories. Even at the Capitol where they're uh, not allowed it, in? Well, uh, interesting thing, and this is one of the things that I've, I've mentioned before, that the, the, the mainstream press is fairly parochial. In fact, they denied our reporter, Capitol reporter, floor credentials to get on the floor of the House. And that didn't have anything to do with her work. That had to do with the Independence Institute. Uh, being the uh, publisher of Complete Colorado, so it was more. So if, if someone's dirtying up the clubhouse, it's the Independence so Institute, yeah. not Complete Colorado. So Sherry Pipe, who, who's had you know a decade as a Colorado <laughs> yeah, award, award winning, award winning, award winning multiple awards, uh, yeah. um, uh, up in the Greeley Tribune, she can't get onto the floor of the house with everybody else. But you know the Gazette reporter, even though Phil Anschutz owns uh, the Gazette. They can get on. That's essentially yes. That's essentially yeah, right. Good. All right, people. And that's all about you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's wrap it up. If people want to go there. Where do they go? CompleteColorado.com. Complete Colorado, gentlemen. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Stay tuned.